Today, you join me on board a stunning, brand new Fleming 55. During this yacht tour, we will, of course, be checking out all of the main areas aboard this stunning trawl yacht, including the engine room and pilot house, so please make sure that you stay tuned. As this was filmed during a boat show, there were other people on board the boat who, of course, I tried to avoid getting in the shot. The Fleming 55 has a length overall of 60 feet and 9 inches, which is 18.5 meters. As we walk forward along the starboard side deck, note just how wide these side decks are. You know, getting around the Fleming 55 is very easy, and thanks to the numerous handrails, is also very safe should you find yourself battling through some big seas. When motoring along at 8 knots, the Fleming 55 has a range of around 2,000 nautical miles. And as you would expect with a long-range motor yacht, safety at sea is incredibly important. Stowed on the starboard and port side of the boat are two life rafts, as well as a life buoy and a lifeline. Three things which you hope that you will never have to use, but are vital for anyone leaving the relative safety of a dock. As we pan forward, we get a glimpse of the reverse raked windows of the pilot house. Note once again the very well-placed handrails, meaning that you can walk around the Fleming 55's entire upper deck whilst keeping hold of something. The 55 has a Portuguese bridge that leads out onto the foredeck. I love the flared bow, a great design feature that helps to keep the seawater from coming over the deck in choppy seas. I also like the fact that the two windlasses on the forepeak are fixed in this elevated position. This whole area is very clean and clutter free. There's also some fantastic seating, a great place to watch the world go by as you motor along to your next port of call. I love the use of the burwood cap rails throughout the upper deck. This composite material looks like varnished teak, but never needs varnishing. Check out the two skylights on the deck. We'll find out more about those later on during this yacht tour video. As we look up at the flybridge, we get a good view of the boat's horns. This is one place I would not understand when these are sounded. The Fleming 55 was first introduced in 1986, and since that time it has benefited from a stringent program of evolution. There have been hundreds of improvements made, both big and small. But at the heart of the Fleming 55 is safety, reliability and of course comfort. As we head aft along the port side deck we get a great view of the enclosed cockpit that can be opened up thanks to the removable covers. What better place to sit and enjoy a meal with your favourite people around you? In the saloon, Fleming is renowned for its quiet and vibration-free cruising characteristics. They also offer semi-custom saloon layouts to suit individual requirements. The full-size domestic appliances can be found in precisely the right places. The open-plan galley, with its melee appliances, blends effortlessly into the saloon and the large windows allow lots of natural light to give these living spaces a light and airy feel. All of the cabinetry is built into the yacht rather than modular in design, which ensures structural integrity and a fit and finish that will last for a very long time. Everything about the well laid out saloon and galley screams practicality without compromising on comfort. It's easy to see why so many Flemings are used as livable long range cruisers. But now, before we check out the pilot house and engine room of this Fleming 55, let us take a look at the accommodation areas. Starting with this twin single. The two portholes allow lots of natural light into the area with the ability to open the windows for some extra ventilation. Fleming have also made an excellent use of space when it comes to the various compartments where you can stow your gear. It's very easy to forget that you're on a boat that's under 60 foot LOA. Across the passageway is this triple single cabin. Again, the finish in here is to an extremely high standard and I love the use and placement of the lighting. It gives this cabin a very warm and cozy feel. The indirect lighting throughout the Fleming 55, I feel, really does enhance the feeling of ambiance throughout the vessel. It helps to give a home from home feel, which, when you are crossing rough seas, is a very pleasing feeling. And again, in this cabin, we have an abundance of natural light, 
thanks to these two portholes. Across the passageway, this shower and head compartment comes with plenty of space and headroom and has a large shower unit. This low maintenance area is effortless to keep clean, allowing you to spend more time doing the things afloat that you enjoy doing. And now let us check out the master forward cabin with its accompanying ensuite. Thanks to the shape of the flared bow, the sheer volume of space inside the master cabin for a boat that is 60 feet LOA is impressive. There's plenty of storage space in here. You may have also noticed when we were on the bow just forward of the Portuguese bridge, the two skylights that add to the natural light we get in the master cabin, thanks to the forward portholes. These two skylights can also be opened up for extra ventilation. The master cabin also has a very spacious ensuite located on the port side. And again, as we pan around, notice how plentiful the storage space aboard the Fleming 55 really is. I love the fact that the shower compartment has a conveniently located seat. Thanks to the Fleming's 300 gallon water capacity, then if you wanted to, you could spend a considerable amount of time in the shower. And now we have finished having a look at the accommodation area, let us head to the flybridge. And what do you think of the accommodation areas? Let me know in the comments below. Access to the flybridge is via the pilot's house with a set of centrally located stairs. The fully equipped helm station is found on the port side of the flybridge. Just look at the commanding and breathtaking view. And note also the restored World War II torpedo boat. As well as a traditional destroyer style ship's wheel, the helm position has four screens, including two Raymering repeater displays and two monitors for the CCTV system. On the port side of the helm station is where we find the engine controls for the two Cummins engines. A buyer has a choice of either MAN or Cummins. As we pan aft, we can see the well-placed seating areas, which gives your guests plenty of options when it comes to soaking up the views. The large boat deck is fitted with an ES-1000 steelhead marine crane. The sturdy hardtop on the flybridge means that when you are spending time up here, you get some protection from the sun's beating rays, or when it comes to being in the UK, the relentless rain that just never seems to stop. I really like the U-shaped seating arrangement on the flybridge on the starboard side with the accompanying table. I also like how the large boat deck is partitioned off from the flybridge via this gate. If you've got small children on board, then the last thing you want them doing is playing around on the boat deck. But what do you think of the flybridge aboard the Fleming 55? Let me know in the comments below. And now let us take a look inside the pilot house of the Fleming 55 which is also one of my favourite pilot houses on a boat under 70 foot LOA. Behind the helm position you have this elegant and comfortable L-shaped seating with table. The large windows with the narrow stanchions afford excellent views both forward and to port and starboard of the pilot house. Whereas most traditional Trawler style yachts have forward raking windows, the pilot house windows on the Fleming 55 are rear raking. As we pan down and check out the equipment on the fully equipped helm station, notes the traditional destroyer style ship's wheel. I also love the captain's chair with the controls on the arms. Here we have the controls for the bow and stern thruster next to the engine controls. I also love the blend of traditional switches against the backdrop of the LCD displays. I also really like the color of the wood against the black panels. On the overhead on the port side we have the VHF radio, next to some repeater displays including the display for the autopilot and another digital engine management display. To starboard of the ship's wheel and within easy reach we find the breaker control panel. And one thing you can be sure of when you're beating through those massive seas is the fact that the helm chair isn't going anywhere thanks to this heavy duty fitting. As I said a moment ago, I love the fact that the armrests on the captain's chair also have controls for the autopilot with a rudder control on the port side. Rolls-Royce don't make helm stations, but if they did, I am pretty confident it would look very similar to the pilot's house aboard the Fleming 55. But what do you think? 
let me know in the comments below. Next we come to the engine room. As mentioned before, Fleming fits their boats out with either MAN or Cummins engines. Not only are these two manufacturers proven to be incredibly reliable, but their engines also meet all of the latest emissions regulations. They also have an impressive torque curve and a great power to weight ratio. As standard, Fleming always install two engines in their boats for redundancy, but also for greater maneuverability. Fleming boats are also fitted with oversized tinned copper cables, AGM batteries, high output alternators and inverter chargers. This Fleming 55 can carry 1000 gallons of fuel and can reach a top speed of around 18 knots, but at 10 knots her fuel burn is only around 10 gallons per hour. Thanks to her fine entry bow combined with its generous upper flare, the semi-displacement hull of the Fleming 55 provides a soft entry into big waves with a very comfortable ride that does not slam in heavy seas. The lack of a hard chine forward also means that there is no annoying wave slapping against the hull when the boat is anchored. That completes our tour of the Fleming 55 trawler yacht. I'd like to say a big thank you to the staff at Fleming Europe for allowing me the time to walk around this fantastic vessel. And as ever, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments section. As ever, I'd like to thank my channel members for supporting my channel and a big welcome to my new channel member, Harum Harum. If you're interested in finding out more, I'll leave a link in the video description. But basically, YouTube's channel membership is their version of Patreon. Before you go, please don't forget to give the video a like and to subscribe to my channel and to check out my other videos and playlists. And if you've got access to a boat that you would like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to contact me via the methods in the video description. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.